London, you're watching Press TV's Between the Headlines, and I'm Afshin Ratansi. Joining me for a closer look between the headlines and the stories of national and international uh, importance are Dilip Hero, playwright and author. His most recent is Blood of the Earth, the global battle for vanishing oil resources. Also here is Iranian professor Piruz Mojra Sadeh. He's the author of Small Players of Great Games. And on the phone we have Professor John Terman, who is executive director of MIT's Center for International Studies. In the past 24 hours, he's just uh, published a paper entitled A New Approach to Iran, which will perhaps be on a desk at the Oval Office right now. He also writes for the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and the International Herald Tribune. On tonight's show, we look at the British government's strategy of trying to retain an independent nuclear energy program, even as it tries to prevent countries like Iran having one. Also, the curious case of U.S. ally Saudi Arabia tying itself in knots over Pakistan and uh, the BBC hitting out against its own senior journalists for their coverage of the Middle East. But first, you can text or email at any time. The text number from anywhere in the world is plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero eight six, and the email address is bth at prestv dot co dot uk. Welcome uh, to all our guests. I should uh, first say that uh, we were hoping for someone from the British Foreign Office about this, uh, these Iran stories. We got a statement from uh, a spokesperson saying, uh, because uh, he pulled out at the last minute, there's been some incorrect reporting concerning the US and other members of the E3 plus 3 being willing to drop the precondition of uranium enrichment before the start of substantive negotiations with Iran. No change is uh, what the British Foreign Office is saying. Well, we've got John Terman from MIT on the line uh, here. Uh, John, you've uh, written this uh, uh, paper, A New Approach to Iran, where uh, you uh, finish up with uh, the Israeli part of the equation, articulate the logic of how Israel's security will be enhanced by a new U.S. Iran relationship. People say that they might meet at the sidelines of the Tokyo conference uh, in the next 24 hours uh, to discuss Pakistan. People say that uh, Iran's foreign minister and, uh, and uh, I think it's Hillary Clinton, perhaps Richard Holbrook. Uh, what do you think they'll be talking about? Do you think they'll be listening to you? And what's in your paper? Well, I hope they're going to be listening to me. But the, the key point is that the policy of the United States, in particular toward Iran, for the last 30 years, a policy of coercion, a policy of sticks and carrots, as we say here, a policy of uh, intimidation from time to time, and until very recently, very harsh rhetoric, uh, has simply not worked. It's a failure, and we have to try something else. <clears throat> President Obama has gotten that going with, with I think, a very, a very useful and, and uh, intelligent framing of the relationship. But uh, we need to do more. We need some action. We need some lifting of sanctions. We need normal diplomatic relations. Um, and I think that will get us uh, very far, uh, at least further, uh, along the road toward a solution to the nuclear issue. Well, not something the British Foreign Office agrees with. There's a piece in the International Herald Tribune. Uh, President indicates that Iran is willing to negotiate with U.S. President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad of Iran said Wednesday he was preparing a proposal to resolve disputes with the West over Tehran's nuclear program. Uh, Professor Mutra Zadeh, um, what do you think uh, will be in this proposal, and how do you think it's being seen? I do Tehran? not have a clue about that, but... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it is Ahmadinejad, and nobody knows uh, what he is, is in, in his mind until he opens his mouth. However, judging on the past trend of uh, this business, um, I believe, uh, first of all, there will be no, um, uh, uh, not even one inch of withdrawing from the uh, standpoint of no uh, stop in enrichment. Enrichment will go on sure. in that proposal. Do they but trust Obama? Do you think they trust Obama? 
It's not a case of trusting one the, uh, the, the other. The, the, is, is the trust has to be built between the two of them. Anyway, what happens here is that I think Ahmadinejad will offer some other uh, formulas for the settlement of the problem, such as what he pr uh, proposed in the past, uh, partnership with the West in enrichment and uh, other part, uh, aspects of the industry, or, um, for instance, agreeing... Well, we have the British Foreign Office saying, well, they're not going to be open to anything. Well, that's the British Foreign Office saying that, but uh, <laughs> the decision is made by Obama, and not by British Foreign Office. Dilipira, do you think uh, yeah. Iran should have any cause for trusting the United States? They, uh, Obama signed the sanctions against civilian aircraft flying over Iran right now. Uh, some would say yeah. in danger because they can't get the parts. No, I think what I can say is what will not be in the proposal. What will not be in the proposal that we are going to suspend enrichment? That is not going to be. No, I mean, that is not negotiated. Now, what can be done? You have to fudge this thing. First of all, remember, election is coming up uh, in uh, Iran. And therefore, and of course, the person who contested against him, Mir Hussein Musavi, has already said that the policy of Ahmadinejad, of, uh, you know, sort of... Will uh, continue. Uh, yeah, you know, he's getting so tough that the West is over, is counterproductive, so he has to appear to well, be no, uh, re reasonable, reasonable. Mr. Musavi said uh, enrichment will continue. Will continue. So, yeah, but he has to appear reasonable, so this is a good way to show that, you know, he has to think of his votes, that I am being reasonable, you see. But what's going to happen in my view is fudging. Fudging will be this way. Okay, you have your centrifuge running, let them run, but don't feed the gas to enrich uranium. You know, it's like your car running without you driving. It's, it's, no, 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 no uh, affect the Iranian election then? Because in some, some people are saying this is a vindication of President Ahmadinejad's policies because talking tough has made the um, American administration, U.S. administration realize that uh, they can't talk to Iran the way that they've been talking to it. I think that the uh, Obama administration is very carefully calculating what will help and what will not help the current president in Iran be reelected. Um, and so not a great deal is being offered at this point uh, for precisely the reason you suggest. Uh, I think what we do want to do, though, is we do want to say we're, we're ready to negotiate, we're ready to engage, uh, but not be too specific. So the, the engagement um, is not preordained in any way, but we are signaling that intention so it doesn't become a campaign issue, and if a reformer is elected in Iran, that he's not saddled. So it becomes with the a, so it is meddling in Iranian. In the United States. But it is meddling in Iranian electoral politics either way, isn't it? If they don't, um, if they don't. That's the way we do things here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, we can't go for six months without saying anything about Iran, right? Well, you, you don't think people in the Iranian Majlis and other uh, parts of the Iranian government uh, will be watching for this? And, uh, that no, we're not saying anything very specific. That's my point. We're not saying that you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. And just, just, it, uh, just finally... More, <coughs> just here finally, are our conditions for talking. Just finally for me, do you think that uh, uh, these were leaks from uh, the... Obama administration, these reports that the British Foreign Office here is denying about the fact that the demand for uh, cessation of enrichment will be dropped? Do you think it comes from uh, the United States? Well, it's hard to say. There are a couple of different factions in the U.S. government now, and they haven't got their act together entirely. And uh, so it's, it's a little difficult to say, but I do think that that represents the most sensible position, that is, that we can have discussions with them without a suspension. But I think the, the more important issue is that we need to improve the relationship uh, in other ways, lifting of some sanctions, non-nuclear sanctions, and normalization of relations before the nuclear issue is going to be gainfully addressed. I'm and sorry, yeah, but we, we can't put the cart before the horse, and that's what we're doing with these yeah, nuclear... You see, the, the thing is that that demand has been dropped from the language for a long time now. Well, I've heard it a couple of times. The, no, and, and, and yeah, well, not from Obama. Not from, the, not from the people who matter. Oh. The people who matter, including the uh, 5 plus 1 or now 3 plus 3, mm. uh, the latest uh, statement they uh, issued, they have dropped that language. 
Well, that's not the official. That's not the official line. John Turman, thank you very much for joining us. We were uh, going to continue this uh, discussion here because although it's a British story related to this, I mean we can uh, say that while uh, Gordon Brown, the British Prime Minister, uh, talked.